Hey everyone, it's Endymion, and it looks like the writing is very evidently on the wall for Netflix's Witcher, as it seems like the entire universe might be crumbling at the seams before our very eyes. So let's look at the latest news and ask the question, how did The Witcher become Netflix's greatest failure? To start, let's look at this article from Marka.com which has exploded over social media titled, The Witcher is put on hold indefinitely, season 3 could be the finale. To the surprise of no one, The Witcher has all but been reduced to nothing thanks to the moronic decisions over at Netflix. From a golden goose of a franchise handed on a silver platter, Netflix's moronic, woke writing staff took what should have been an easy slam dunk and caused the largest fumble in Netflix's history. Sure, I could argue and say Cleopatra is the worst thing that Netflix has made, or the catalog of terrible and forgettable programs that they've sharded out of their anuses in the past, but the truth is that The Witcher is by far Netflix's greatest failure. The reason being is that The Witcher had the potential to become Netflix's Game of Thrones, a real trendsetter of a series that could have become a legendary phenomenon that drove subscription numbers, and garnered hype and Emmy awards if Netflix just stopped waving their nonsense in front of it. I know some will say even Game of Thrones eventually fell to ruin as well, which yes, you're right. The difference, however, is that the point where Game of Thrones turned to ass was when the showrunners ran out of source material to adapt, and eventually had to fall back on their own writing abilities in order to create new stories. But when Game of Thrones was following the books faithfully, there was no other show like it or since. No show had that level of hype or quality, it was truly the golden goose of television royalty. A series so beloved and anticipated that every new episode or season would break every record. But the advantage The Witcher had over Game of Thrones was a simple but effective one. Whereas Game of Thrones was still being actively written by the human tortoise who takes decades to finish his series, The Witcher was already complete. There was no need to change the stories, characters, or themes. Everything you needed was laid out in front of you. All you had to do was translate what was already there into live-action form, and the awards, viewership, money, and fame would fall into your lap effortlessly in the process. But Netflix, like many other modern-day studios, have been infiltrated by the minds of nonsensical, identity-politically brain-rotted activists, who aren't hired for their talent, but instead what they identify as. No longer are writers picked because they're the best for the job, but instead it's all about what pronouns they go by, and how many stupid made-up terms they check off in order to seem more important than they actually are. Netflix and its house full of dumbasses did the reverse of Game of Thrones. Instead of adapting the source material until there was nothing left and then adding their own spin, Netflix's teams of writers decided to throw the source material out the window immediately and turn the entire already written and finished source material into expensive fan fiction. This is why, like so many other misfires in Hollywood from Netflix's Masters of the Universe or the current state of Star Wars, they all have one thing in common. They all destroy or sideline their male characters and treat them like afterthoughts in order to make way for female representation. This is why seasons 1 through 3 of Witcher could basically be called the Ciri and Yennefer show with Geralt taking back seat while the women do all the girl bossing. Of course, Netflix will try to alter this and say one of the reasons was because Henry Cavill was too expensive to pay for a Netflix series. Since in seasons 1 and 2, Cavill was raking in around $400,000 an episode. In season 3, his payout per episode went to a million. Which may seem high, but again, let's be real here, he's the reason why people were watching to begin with. There is no justification here in blaming the star of one of your biggest shows for its downfall when he was so ready to deliver to the fans. I oftentimes reference this one article from IGN back in 2021, where Henry Cavill confirmed he was absolutely committed to playing Geralt for the entirety of the series. His one condition being that the show continues to tell great stories and honor the creator of The Witcher's work. The more I read about Henry Cavill's devotion to Geralt, the more depressed I get. Just listen to the showrunner of Witcher talking about how committed Cavill was in 2021, and I quote, A lot of the notes he was sending to me were about Geralt's dialogue. Could he, first of all, say more? Everybody came out of season 1 laughing and loving Geralt's fuming, but Henry was saying that when you read the books, you spend a lot of time in Geralt's head. 
So how can we put that on the page? Meanwhile, I wanted to tell the story of him becoming a father figure to Siri. So those two things coalesced wonderfully. He opens up to get Siri to trust him by speaking his mind and his heart more, end quote. This quote always angers me because you had a Netflix. You had everything you needed. You had the money, you had the source material, you had the freaking Geralt of Rivia willing and ready to deliver what fans wanted. And you took all of this and decided it wasn't worth maybe stepping aside and letting your damn egos for once in your careers not sabotage something. You could have had the greatest fantasy show ever put to television if you just stopped pushing your ideological nonsense for once in your goddamn lives. It's why it's no wonder Season 3 lost 60% of its viewership when compared to previous seasons. It's no wonder your audience scores are in the dumps and that those last two episodes of Season 3 are the lowest rated episodes of the entire series. According to IMDb, the last two episodes titled Out of the Fire Into the Frying Pan, which is a terrible name by the way, and The Cost of Chaos are both graded by audiences with terrible scores. The first having a 4.2 out of 10 and Chaos having a 5.3 out of 10. And when comparing and scoring every episode of the Witcher series so far, all 8 episodes of season 3 are currently the lowest rated episodes of the entire series. Every single goddamn episode of season 3 dude, are you kidding me? How do you fumble it this bad? To compare the lowest rated episode on IMDB for season 2, it's the Care Morin one with a 7.6 out of 10. And while the series overall holds steady on IMDb as a whole, nearly all of its losses in ratings and score are due to the existence of Season 3. Then of course there's the ending to Henry Cavill as Geralt, which Netflix hyped as being bombastic, heroic, and an amazing send-off. So of course, when the final episodes aired, I clicked on the ending and fast-forwarded out of curiosity just to see if Netflix was lying or not. Cavill's final scene has Geralt killing a bunch of soldiers in a forest with some pretty bad looking CGI blood effects. It ends with Geralt, Yaskir, and Milva leaving the woods behind in search of Ciri who's been kidnapped by the Nilfgaardian Empire. And that's it. That's how season 3 ends. The thing that confused a ton of fans is that the season just ends with no clear reason or way for Cavill to suddenly transform into Liam Hemsworth's Geralt. And while the producers have hinted that Change will be loyal to the books, which is ridiculous to hear since this is Netflix we're talking about, the Change will either happen off screen or they'll use a Henry Cavill body double to enact whatever nonsense they have in mind for the swap. Since we all know Netflix is likely unwilling to pay Cavill another million dollars just so they can swap him to the much cheaper and likely less Witcher lore informed Liam Hemsworth. But goddamn, dude, this is such a mess, and the thing is that, like I said, if they just followed the books, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We'd all be cheering and be hyped for future Witcher seasons, but instead we've all gathered for a funeral when we should be celebrating. And remember that the god-awful Blood Origin was the testament to Netflix's vision for Witcher. That show was just an expensive fan fiction where Netflix and its writers who think they knew better were allowed full creative control to make something that rivaled the original Witcher story. And by the way, the producers genuinely believed Blood Origin was good enough to stand shoulder to shoulder with the original work. I'm not kidding. And the best they could come up with is that the original Witcher was a elf guy in a Grey Hulk bodysuit. And that Ciri's ancestor was a woman who looked nothing like her and that the conjunction, which is a single most important important and mysterious event in The Witcher is explained as just being the result of two wizards whose names I can't remember fighting each other and causing the event to happen. Essentially, every part of The Witcher from its lore, performances, story, and themes that Netflix added to the source material are without a doubt the worst parts by a landslide in the eyes of everyone watching. Nothing they added has made the series better and nothing they've thought would be a good idea ended up being anything but a terrible choice in the end. And with the supposed tease that Liam Hemsworth's Geralt will just be a multiversal alternate version of Geralt, it just further proves how much Netflix doesn't understand what the fans want. With one of the show's moronic producers saying The Witcher's world is not one story or place, but a complex universe of things all happening at once. And that this means there are infinite Geralt's, Yennefer's, and whatever else conveniently available so Netflix can swap characters when they inevitably ruin them. So don't be surprised when Liam Hemsworth's Geralt comes shooting out of a Doctor Strange-like portal completely confused as to how he got there in the first place. If Netflix was smart, which they aren't, but if they were, they'd start season 4 with a conjunction event that erases the current timeline, and reverts the story back to the beginning of season 2. 
and the entire story could just continue from that point and the writers and Cavill could just act like season 2 and 3 never happened. And we'd get a proper show that doesn't suck donkey nuts. But the sheer hubris and self-entitlement of Netflix doesn't surprise me since they're not the only morons who were given a golden goose. Take for example the recent dumpster fire that was Marvel's Secret Invasion, which not only ruined pivotal characters like War Machine, it's the first Disney Plus show that actually makes the movies that came before it worse due to its added context. But according to the director of Secret Invasion, whose name is Ali Salim, he doesn't think it's their job to meet audience expectations. My brother in Christ, your entire job is literally to make something that meets the audience's expectations. Like, what are you even saying? Ali Salem went on to say, and I unfortunately quote, I don't read reviews with all due respect. Personally, I see all the storytelling work I do as a dialogue with the audience. When the show is finished and shown on the screen, that's my part of the dialogue. And then the audience begins their part of the answer. I think that's valuable, but I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question. Is it our job to live up to their expectations or tell the story we're telling? It's kind of complicated. I'd love for everyone to love it, but I don't have that expectation either, so I feel great about the reception." End quote. And just like that, Secret Invasion's moronic director washes his hands of the series, collects his paycheck, and then continues on to his next project. People like this are a dime a dozen in Hollywood's inner circles, and Salim is cut from the same cloth as morons like Lauren Hissrich, who's in charge of Witcher and Netflix. These people really do think the audiences are to blame, that they're not willing to hear new stories or accept things that steer away from the source material. But this is simply not true, since you could argue that the entire MCU from Phase 1 to the end of Endgame is, by and large, a unique story that while it takes inspirations from other stories and arcs, it is its own thing that stands on its own. Even the CD Projekt Red Witcher games are technically not source material accurate, since they take place after the end of the books, meaning everything there is, by definition, expensive fan fiction if you want to call it what it is. But the difference between the Infinity Saga and the Witcher games and a lot of the nonsense going on with modern Hollywood's rejection of source material is that you can deviate from the source, but only if what you bring to the table is genuinely great or better. Many would argue that the Witcher game stories and the side quests within rival or equal the works of Sapkowski. The many Witcher contracts or the interesting people that you meet or creatures you fight are not exactly from the books. But CD Projekt Red rose to the task and made something that I think many would agree equals or surpasses the books in ways. So it's not that we don't want new stories, it's that we don't want shit and then get called assholes if we don't want to eat it. Hell, if you look at a lot of the movies recently that are killing it at the box office, they're based on IP, sure, but their stories are unique. Oppenheimer and Barbie are good examples that studios can take something and make successful movies out of them. Not to mention, there's unique original story-driven dramas like The Bear being probably the best show in years, in my opinion anyways. Look, what I'm trying to say is that in the end, The Witcher didn't fail because it took chances. It failed because the people put in charge were evidently not the right people for the job. And when you hire people who openly admit that they dislike the source material, it's no wonder that the end product is shit. The Witcher could have been the single greatest magnum opus within Netflix's crown of elite content. It could have been the next Game of Thrones, a show that combines everything people love about high fantasy with the infinite star power of their leading man. But instead, we're left with a decaying corpse of a promise wrapped in the virtues of identity politics that forsakes what could have been, and forgets to embrace the white wolf and use that to usher in a new age of golden television. The Witcher is by far and large Netflix's greatest failure and it's not even remotely close. So when the show eventually gets cancelled, its side projects shelved, and the series rots into obscurity, it won't be the fans' fault for not supporting it. But the moronic yes-men and women who truly thought that they knew better than the golden opportunity they were given, and that, my friends, is a shame. And that is why The Witcher is dead. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think as always. Subscribe for more in the future for everything entertainment. Have a great day. Go watch The Bear if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. And oh yeah, Henry Cavill and the fans, you guys deserved so much better.